Hello there guys, welcome back, it's me Unstable Voltage and this is episode 2 of my Getting Started with Old World series. So in the last video, or the first video, we just talked about settling your city, we went through some of the different unit types you start with, selecting your technology, how movement works, uh, how harvesting works, and now we're going to look at some of the other stuff. So one of the things that I did mention towards the end of the last video is that you want to make sure you keep your line of succession going. Currently, the character that we are playing as, King Romulus the Founder, has no wife. He does have an heir, which is his brother, so if he was to die right now, we would still continue playing as the brother, but we want to get a wife, because you do get a, um, additional benefits from having a wife anyway. So, with our character selected, so we want to click the little uh, head uh, side profile button up here in the top right hand corner that will show us the characters by default the filter just shows you your line of succession but we want to go and click the second button here which will show all characters so there's different filters here governors generals agents ambassador chancellor spy master uh, the ambassador chancellor and spy master are all currently locked uh, until we uh, unlock the aristocracy tech and spouse but as you can see we have no spouse so we're going to select ourselves and we're going to run this action it takes one year to complete it will find someone for us to marry it'll cost 100 civics our civics are up here we're generating 18 per turn and it'll cost us two orders we have 11 so we're going to go ahead and click on that and we'll have to wait a little while for well we'll have to wait until the next turn for that to happen so the uh, uh, worker is still working on that farm uh, we've got our scouts around here. Now, we did find this barbarian camp down here. We might want to go and deal with that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start moving towards it with our warrior. So, I'm going to move all the way down here. In fact, I'm going to move right down to this tile. Now, I could force march them if I wanted to. Uh, force marching... Uh, force marching is when a unit has used all of its potential movement. Now, you still need to have orders... For every additional move after um, the force march. And also force marching costs you 100 training. But it also leaves your units fatigued. Fatigue is not good because it will weaken you. Uh, we can also add a general and we can promote. And we're going to do some of those things. So we want to add a general to the warrior. I don't really want to add myself as a general. Um... In fact, I don't think we need a general right now because none of these people are particularly good as generals. So I'm going to cancel that. But I will promote the unit. So we could give them... And again, the options you get for promotions aren't always the same every time. And you can see we are fatigued here now. We'd have to force march them. So we can give them combat one, which will give them plus five attack and defensive strength. We can give them Amphibious, which gives them uh, plus 50 attack strength if they attack across a river. Or 50% attack strength uh, for land and water combat. Uh, we could give them Highlander, which gives them plus 25% attack strength and defensive strength if they're on a hill. And we give them Brave, which gives them plus 10% attack and defensive strength versus melee units. So the iconography is, if it's a sword, it is attack strength. If it's a shield, it is defensive strength. If it's a shield crossed by two swords, it's attack and defensive strength. Uh, we are mostly going to be fighting melee units, so Brave is quite a decent one to have. It's defensive strength as well, and that puts us on cooldown, so we can't do anything for the rest of the turn with that unit. And you'll see they now have a little gold chevron below their icon, indicating that they have a promotion, and you've got the cooldown icon above them saying that they can't do anything right now. Fine, that's great. We still have four orders left. We should use them. So let's go and start looking around a little bit with our scout. We can run around and harvest the horses. That will give us an extra 50 gold. We've still got one movement left, so let's come down here. We've found some iron. Um, we've also found a city site. Now, even though we've found iron, there are various different places that you can get these resources from. Food is always gathered from farms. Um... Stone is always gathered from quarries, and you get better quarries if you build at the bottom of a mountain. Iron is always built from uh, uh, received from mines. 
if you find an actual uh, iron resource, you'll get more iron from it than building a mine on a sort of normal hill tile. Uh, but you don't need to worry too much about not having like iron or stone resource directly in your city. You can get it from pretty much any tile. Unlike Civilization, where you're actually required to have the correct tile uh, to be able to do that. So let's go on and end the year because there's not much else that we can do at this point. So here's the family marriage offer. So whenever you do the event for a marriage, you will get presented with two options. You don't have to pick either of them. If you don't pick either of them, you can do the um, marriage proposal again. But once more, it'll cost you another order. It will cost you another 100 civics and it'll take another year. So we've got uh, two offers basically here. We've got Oligarch Fulvia, the superstitious. Uh, she's apparently is a good commander. Um, if we hold down shift, it will allow us to move uh, over. So normally, if you select, if you highlight something with the mouse and move the mouse off, the tooltip disappears. If you hold down shift, the tooltip stays open. So she has uh, plus two courage, so it increases training. She also has plus two discipline, which basically increases money for generals. Discipline increases each unit's XP for year. As a general, um, she gets plus 20% combat strength, uh, attack and defensive strength if it's adjacent to the same unit. Uh, and minus 2 um, wisdom, unfortunately, which reduces her science a little bit. So she's upset with me. She doesn't particularly like me. Opinion's another thing that we'll talk about later on. So she's minus two wisdom, plus two courage, plus two discipline. We can look at the other one here. She is a hero. She has plus three courage and plus two wisdom. As a general, she can heal in neutral territory. And she doesn't hate me. So she might be the better option to go for. They are both of the uh, same family. So let us go for uh, Sempronia. Because she likes me a little bit more. So now, now we've got a wife, and what we can do, because we're on the next turn, we could go over to this unit, we could add a general, and we could actually put her in charge of this army. So you'll now see this little icon down here in the bottom corner, it means it's got a hero acting as a general. Uh, there is a cooldown, because we've obviously assigned uh, a unit to it, so it's one turn before we can do anything here, uh, but that will make us a better unit, essentially. And uh, we can also go to the city and we can assign a governor. We could assign our um, wife to it. That's not our wife. We could assign uh, this character to it or we could assign ourselves. So this one would give us plus 4.4 civics per year, plus 1.4 training per year. Uh, but it would cost us a little bit of science and cost us a little bit of money. If I put myself in charge, it's a net bonus all the way along. So we're going to put ourselves in charge as the governor for now. We can always change this later. We're still working on the settler, so we've got um, three more years to go on that. If we were to click any of these other things on the left-hand side, we could add them to the queue. If you hold down shift and click on one of these, it will... Um, jump them to the big, to the front of the queue. We're not going to worry too much about that for now. Uh, tutorial, take the field. I don't need the tutorial about tooltips. I don't need the tutorial about marriage. So, because I've just told you how that works. So, we've got this next unit option because we still have some units that haven't moved. I don't really need to move the militia around so i'm going to click this button here which is sentry so basically it puts them to sleep so you've got the options you can disband the unit and get rid of it if you want to you can get it to pass just for a single turn so you'll be reminded about it on the next turn you can get it to sleep where it'll basically just go dormant and hibernate until you either select it or it gets attacked or you can use Sentry. Sentry will basically put it to sleep, but it will wake up if an enemy appears within five tiles. Meanwhile, we're going to move around with this scout, because we do have some orders spare. So we can move here, and we can harvest this ore. So that gives us eight iron. We can claim this city site. Now then, in order to be able to claim a city site, you just move a unit onto it. However, if somebody else moves their unit onto it, they will claim it back from you. So... It's a good idea to get a settler onto them as soon as possible. 
Looks like we've mostly got mountains to the west, but we found another one of these sites here. Veteran Soldier. Um, a scarred veteran soldier crouches in the ruins. She says that she once commanded the armies of a great nation before the resistance brought it crashing down. She is still willing to share her vast battlefield knowledge if you are willing to listen. So we can either get military drill, which is a free technology, or we can invite her to, uh, invite her to court. So this is uh, uh, Boudicca, or Boudicca, depending on uh, which version of history you go with. Uh, we can bring her to court and she becomes a court soldier. It's not going to take too long to unlock the tech, so let's get an extra soldier. That's actually quite useful for us. So we've got somebody else within the uh, nation. I'm going to leave this scout here for now and move some of my other scouts around in different directions. This scout here can start moving to the south, puts him on hills, see what we might find. We've only got one order left. And we've contacted a tribe. We've met our first tribe, the Numidians. Tribes can engage in limited diplomacy, but generally won't be coordinated in the way that opposing nations are. So a tribe is a bit different to a barbarian. So they're a little bit like the city-states of, uh, of Old World. So when you find a barbarian camp, Every barbarian camp is independent. They all work independently of one another and they'll attack you if you get close to them. When you meet a tribe, tribes may have several locations. Now normally you can enter into some diplomacy with them. They're not normally hostile but can be. Uh, often they will just try and attack whatever your closest city is but they may also organise a group attack from several of their camps. So, we'll have to decide what we want to do about them later. Uh, we have used all of our orders, so there's nothing much else that we can do right now unless we want to pay to unlock some more. I'm not really feeling that I do right now, so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, I am going to just minimise down the characters panel, because I don't really need it open. You can see at a glance up here, when you open the characters panel, it shifts over to the left. Uh, you can see at a glance here who are spouses, who are Ares, and again the Ambassador, Chancellor and Spymaster when we unlock that tech. And uh, you've got the different families here, the different religions, we've got the different nations that we are aware of, and we've also got the um, what we're working on in the cities and also our unit list is up here on the right hand side as well. So we are going to... Yep, it's giving me the tutorial about tooltips, I don't care. Give me the tutorial about marriage, I don't care. And we're just going to end the year. So at the end of this year, we should have finished this farm. There we go, rural yields. This is an important one here. So rural yields are food, iron, stone and wood. They're primarily drawn from rural improvements and collected in the global stockpile, which is up here at the top. You can spend money to purchase rural yields directly from the top bar where it shows your current stockpile. And again, we, we understand that. Uh, the primary source of food is farms, uh, which are most fruitful next to fresh water and on lush terrain. Food is needed for your population to produce new settlers. So a city's population is the sum of its specialists and citizens. Each point of a city's population consumes food and increases the city's gold cost maintenance. Cities cost additional food per population, and while cities of developing, strong and legendary culture also cost iron, stone and wood, respectively, and cumulatively. Um, so settlers do cost us food, so that's why we want to build up, build, build up our food stock pile. The primary resource of iron is mines, which are most productive on ore and hills. Iron is needed to produce many types of military units, including warriors and axemen. The primary source of stone is quarries, which is most productive on marble and arid terrain, and when adjacent to mountains. Stone is needed primarily to build improvements like shrines and city projects and walls. So you don't necessarily need to have uh, ore in order to get iron, or marble in order to get stone. Forestry tech enables the construction of lumber mills on trees and that allows us to produce wood. Workers can also cut down trees uh, with the cut uh, trees action button in the action panel. Wood is needed to build city improvements like the barracks, military units like archers and ship units like biremes. You don't get the lumber mill until you unlock forestry tech which is a little bit later on in the game but your workers can always cut trees manually. So we've finished the farm. It's now suggesting that we build another farm here. 
Uh, you can see if we mouse over the farm, it's showing us what all of the different yields are on those tiles. So this one will be a plus 7, this one will be an 8.5, this one will be a 7. But if we don't mouse over any of those tiles, you'll see it gives us some other options for other building types. It's suggesting we build a quarry over here and suggesting we build a mine over here. We're going to need both of those things. Uh, this one, well, they're equally as close, so we're going to go over here and we are going to just tell it we want to build the... Um, quarry for this one was it which one was it suggesting quarry yeah we'll build the quarry over here and again that uses three orders because it had to cut the trees in order to do so so let's go ahead and think about attacking these barbarians hopefully we should be a little bit stronger let's go and move next to them now we've discovered a landmark here occasionally you'll discover new landmarks you have the option to name them you can just use the default or randomly generated name if you prefer and it gives us extra legitimacy legitimacy is nice because as you get your legitimacy up you will gain additional orders per turn so if we mouse over these barbarians now we can see how much um, damage we would do to them when you attack you do receive damage, but you don't receive nearly as much damage as um, you do if you are attacked. So it's always better to be the attacker than the defender. If you attack first, you're going to do a big chunk of damage to the enemy and you're going to take very little damage back. So we're going to go ahead and attack there. We can only attack once per turn. We are now on cooldown. We can't move either, although there are upgrades later that do allow you to move after you have attacked. So we've just got to wait for the next turn there. Not much we can do. Uh, we're now being reminded about our scouts. Probably want to keep away, maybe, from these guys. But we can sort of head around to the north and just start uncovering some of the terrain around us. Again, we've discovered some mountains. We'll just pick the uh, select the default name there. And we are out of order, so we can safely end the year. So the rival's turn will be the other civilizations. The camera's now moved over to the barbarians. We took barely any damage from that. So we will go ahead with the warrior selected and right click to attack again. So we gain some XP. They lose some HP. If I mouse over them now, you'll see that a skull and crossbones is appearing. So the next time I attack them, it will actually finish them off. Our work is busy, so we can move our scouts around and uncover some more terrain. Let's go ahead and have a look up here to the north. We've discovered a, another city site. We can run up there and claim it. This one looks nice and safe. It's a peninsula. There are some, some, some sea resources as well that you can also uh, collect with a worker. Uh, we have five orders left, so we'll have a little bit of a look around here. Uh, this is looking like it's a bit of a dead end. Oh, we found another one of those uh, sites. We can grab that on the next turn. So once again, let's go and hit end year. So as you can see, there's very little point to having a huge number of units because you are limited by how many um, orders that you have. So this is a tutorial for starting our second city. And do we have an heir? Yes, we do. We have an heir. You can see this very uncanny valley looking child that's now appeared and replaced our brother. So your family line has a new heir, Prince Posthumus. Uh, training strong heirs will be vital for the survival of your nation as once your current ruler is gone, someone will need to take the reins. Once your heir has grown up a bit, you'll be able to choose an education path to guide them into the role you need them to fulfill. The first four heirs in succession are members of your court and their ratings will affect your global yields. For example, an heir with high wisdom will increase your science. So he doesn't have anything at the moment because he's just a baby and he doesn't have any particular skills. So we do get some um, culture though because, you know, we've, we've had a son. So he's now talking a little bit about settling our second city and that is definitely something that we could do. Maybe we want to go up here where it's a little bit safer. Maybe we want to come down here and grab a city down near where the barbarians are. I think that's what I might want to do actually. So with my settler selected, I'm going to start moving down here towards the uh, barbarian camp. I can only move that far because I only have four movement. Um, so we'll have to get in the rest of the way there on the next turn. Now there are some more barbarian units spawning here. But we can very easily jump in there, kill that barbarian and clear the camp. We might get attacked by this marauder but I honestly think we're going to be fine. Uh, we still have some orders left, so we can continue to do a little bit of exploration. 
so let's move over here. Buried treasure. Your scouts stumble across an ancient, long-abandoned structure that appears to have once been a village surrounding a mine. Upon investigation, your wise men inform you that the substance mined here was Kalanite, and that this vein has not yet been exhausted. It would take an investment to get the mine back operational, but the result would be that your craftsmen could make the most extraordinary pottery. What do you say? So we can spend 250 gold, and we gain porcelain, which gives us a luxury. Or we could say no, and we get 40 XP. Now, the luxury can be traded at a city to reduce discontent. So basically, it reduces unhappiness, much like in civilization. We can also trade them with other nations to improve their opinion of us. We can afford the gold, so let's go ahead and grab it. It's a good opportunity to, to get some there. We'll have a little look around here, but then I think I might start bringing this scout back towards home. So we've just found some silver here. Now the scout has used all of its movement. He can't move any further, but we still have an order left. So we can actually harvest the silver and that'll give us 18 gold back in the bank. Now we, if we hit the next unit button, it will still cycle because we could always spend a little bit of the uh, training here in order to um, force march some of these units. But we don't really want to be able to do that. We also now need to choose a production in our capital. So there are a few things that we can do. We can build military units. We can build a, more settlers, more workers, more scouts and militia. Uh, or we can actually produce specialists. Now specialists appear on any tile where you've made an improvement. So for, exa for example, we have a farm tile here so we can get a farmer specialist. Now, if we had multiple farms, you'd see multiple farmers. So, you have to click on the right one depending on the tile that you want to put them in. Or you can just click on the plus button directly on that tile. So, if we were to get a specialist here, that would cost us eight civics. So, the speed at which something is built, um, the cost for building it, depends very much on... Uh, they're all based on different uh, stats. So... The speed for building a settler, a worker, a scout, and a militia is based on our city's growth. The speed for building a warrior and a her status is based on our training output. The um, specialist is based on our civics output. There are also these city-wide projects that are based on civics, like building walls, having festivals that will increase our population and reduce our unhappiness, and um, the council which will basically give us more higher civics outputs. These, these are all things that we can do. What we probably want to get, two things, we want to get another worker ASAP. So I'm going to click on the worker. We probably want to get another settler ASAP as well. But let's concentrate on the worker and then we can end the year. So I'm also going to end the video here because I think that's a good place to stop. So we've talked a little bit about combat, uh, marriage between characters and... Uh, the sort of things that you can build at a city as well as a bit more on exploration. Uh, when we come back on the next video, we'll be founding our second city and starting to expand a little bit more. I'll be waffling on slightly less and uh, sort of pushing more towards uh, just expanding for you. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you're still enjoying this video series. I will see you on the next video. And until then, goodbye for now.